I said, guess who's back? Man, guess who's back? I said, guess who's back? The pride of Cameroon, the pride of France, now residing in Las Vegas, Nevada. He put the entire boxing world on notice. And what did he do? He became a ranked heavyweight. And then what happens as a result of that? You get some more big fish. Now, some people thought, all right, it's back to mixed martial arts. It's a mixed rules fight with Deontay Wilder. Well, I'm told after the Deontay Wilder fight and after he lost to Joseph Parker on December 23rd in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, everything changed. And so it is a done deal. I have confirmed via Turkey Al Sheikh and multiple sources that it's a done deal. It's Francis Ngannou against Anthony Joshua. What's going on, people? It's Bat Chat TV back with another video. Let's get straight into this one. Well, you heard it here first. Breaking news: Anthony Joshua next opponent will be Francis Ngannou in March in Saudi Arabia. Um, Please forgive me, I've got a bit of a cold, a bit of a cough, and uh, I don't sound so great. But it's quite late um, when this news happened, and I thought I'd do a video straight away just to let you guys know what's going on. Um, this fight has been confirmed. There will be a press conference um, for this fight in the coming weeks um, for March. But I, I just, um, I mean, I knew that it could have been on the cards, but I just didn't think that uh, this is the direction they would go in. You know, I, I actually um, was thinking much more about, you know, the top 10 ranked opponents, Herkovic, uh, maybe a fight with Zili Zhang. I was thinking something like that. I didn't think that they'd go for the kind of gimmick type of fight. But I am excited, just like most people. I think uh, nowadays we're getting a lot more of these crossover fights. I think um, maybe Floyd Mayweather and uh, Conor McGregor kind of opened up the floodgates for these type of fights and then obviously the invention of the misfits um celebrity boxing and then the infamous logan paul brothers um, you know having a lot of fights and just basically bringing eyes to the sport um everything is just uh, views and you know social media and i feel like boxing had to kind of make that shift or kind of include um a, a new a new style of promotion. Even the sanctioning bodies have had to kind of embrace um, the surge in social media influence. You know, in, in, in most cases, they would kind of mandate a fight and there would be no kind of flexibility, but we're seeing people like Anthony Joshua, people like Tyson Fury being allowed to have these crossover fights. And um, yeah, I'm definitely here for it. You know, I mean, I mean, I would prefer, if I'm honest, to see Anthony Joshua fight either Philip Hergovic or Zili Zhang. Um, they they would be few of the main um, fighters I would like to see uh, Anthony Joshua fight. But I know that it's a business. There are a lot of fans that are not hardcore fans, but they're just kind of getting into boxing and uh, they're kind of uh, influenced by the celebrity boxing, and they like this kind of crossover fight because Ngannou has made a name for himself and he's done really well to cross over, made a name for himself, um, had a outstanding performance against Tyson Fury, arguably. Some people say that he won. I personally don't think he won, but he came close enough to winning um, to, to really make a name for himself. You know, so I think it was an amazing performance. He's put himself right in there. I mean, if you just think about what Francis Ngannou has done, it's nothing short of a miracle. Coming from UFC, even before UFC, uh, he came to this country. Everyone knows his story. You know, um, had a difficulty with his immigration. Wanted to take up some kind of sport. Wanted to originally be a boxer, uh, but had to just take what he was given and uh, walked into a um, martial arts um, club. And, you know, next thing, he's got a contract with the, with the UFC. Hardly any experience, only been training for, what was it, three years or something like that. Um, you know, runs through a bunch of contenders just with natural power. And uh, that's, you know, that's just such an amazing story. Loses his first attempt at um, a world championship against Stipe Miocic. You know, has to climb back up, up the ranks, gets his uh, 
gets his shot again and completely demolishes a guy who's been ruling for, you know, 10 years or something like that. Um, it's an amazing story. Falls out with Dana White in the UFC, crosses over to boxing, um, gets a fight with Tyson Fury. Where did that come from? Does extremely well, better than anyone else has done against Tyson Fury. And now he's just made a name for himself. People who don't watch UFC, who wouldn't even know Francis Ngannou, they now know him. They now know him more than, you know, fighters coming up in boxing. And this is this is the direction that boxing is going in because of social media. We're going in this direction where we're seeing professional boxers favour fights or prioritise even fights with um, celebrities rather than, you know, highly ranked opponents. And that's just because the fans are not just coming from pure boxing fans anymore. We've got a whole variety of people interested in uh, a spectacle, basically. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. Um, talking about the actual fight, this is a good fight because Francis Ngannou has got skills. He can box. He will be most likely trained by Mike Tyson again, and I think he did an amazing job. Mike Tyson is a legend, and he did a, an, he mapped out a brilliant game plan against Tyson Fury, which actually gave Ngannou the chance to have the platform to now call out these these big, huge names in boxing like Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, I feel quite sorry for him. A lot of things have gone wrong for him. He was meant to be, uh, was was set to fight Anthony Joshua and, um, and get that big bag of money and that opportunity. He fell at the first hurdle, which was uh, Joseph Parker. And now it's like Anthony Joshua can't do any wrong. Anthony Joshua um, having an outstanding performance against Otto Walling, while Deontay Wilder having probably one of the worst uh, performances he's had and then now Anthony Joshua's now landing himself another big money fight um, with Francis Ngannou and what's happening to Wilder Wilder's actually lost out on two big fights that he wanted to have um, in 2024 he wanted the Anthony Joshua fight he's lost out on that and uh, he wanted the fight with Francis Ngannou, they even met and spoke about a fight in Africa and now, you know, he's a lot less considered for these, um, for these extremely lucrative fights. He's got um, a long way to, to climb back up the ranks and especially because he's actually said that he doesn't want to fight uh, Joseph Parker in a rematch. Maybe he'll get, um, I, I think he should fight Joseph Parker in a rematch to put right what went wrong. And, you know, if he was to beat Joseph Parker, Deontay Wilder, he can say it was down to the ring rust. He's got his timing back and, and, and people would start believing in him again. You know, and uh, I, think, I think he needs to do that. But instead, he's saying he's not going to try and right that wrong. He just wants to fight Anthony Joshua. And uh, if that's his mindset, I don't think he's going to do well. Um, he could do, but it's going to be difficult for him because if Anthony Joshua beats... Uh, Francis Ngannou and knocks him out which I think he may do to be honest and we'll get on to that um, then I, I, I think Anthony Joshua will have to fight a mandatory and uh, it will be you know maybe uh, Philip Hergovic and so how long is Wilder going to be waiting for a shot at Anthony Joshua at that point you know so I, I don't know I don't know what's going on with Wilder but in this case the fight with Ngannou and Anthony Joshua is a good fight based on the performance that Ngannou had against Tyson Fury, I think Anthony Joshua will make a statement in this fight. I just do. I feel like Anthony Joshua is coming into a different phase in his, uh, in his career. A lot of things are coming together for him. You know, He was always working on certain things, working on certain boxing um, skills, You know, just like really working hard with different uh, trainers. And now with Ben Davids, Davidson, I think something's clicked. I think something's clicked. I think he's learned how to de deliver that power. And uh, now they're working on a game plan to um, to nullify kind of Usyk's movement, which is why he lost against Usyk. They're, they're watching things on Tyson Fury. 
Anthony Joshua's never been in a better place now. He's turned everything around. And I don't think this version of Anthony Joshua loses to Francis Ngannou. I think he's going to shock the world and stop Francis Ngannou, or at least knock him down. He'll 100% he's going to knock Ngannou down. I can just see it happening. Uh, I, just feel, I just feel like there's a completely different timing from UFC to, uh, to boxing. Now, most people would say, well, he's already fought Tyson Fury. So he's got the experience of fighting one of the, uh, arguably the best heavyweights already. So he shouldn't struggle against Anthony Joshua. But to that, I would say that's an unfair um, assessment. I don't think it works like that. I think mindset um, comes into it quite a lot. I feel like Tyson Fury didn't respect Francis Ngannou at all. I think Tyson Fury's um, whole outlook was, let me go up against this guy. He's a big, strong guy. It's going to look good when I knock him out. You know, and, and, and that's what I thought, uh, that's what I think Tyson Fury was thinking. Um, he just came forward, throwing shots. He didn't think Francis Ngannou had the skills to deal with what he was doing in there. He tried to just uh, overwhelm him. He thought that he could get rid of this UFC uh, heavyweight, you know, and um, make a statement and say, oh, you know, if he's the heaviest puncher, the biggest puncher in the world, and I just knocked him out, what does that make me? And that's what Tyson Fury really wanted to do. That's why he didn't use any skills. That's why he wasn't boxing behind the jab until he got dropped. Once he got dropped and he found that... Um, Francis Ngannou actually had a lot better skills than he thought. He started boxing, he was boxing behind the jab, and uh, in, he was landing, but not that flush, but he was landing uh, shots on Francis Ngannou that started to add up after the damage had been done. This is the reason why people think the fight was so close, and it was close, because Francis Ngannou came in there to do damage, and Tyson Fury uh, wasn't aware that Ngannou could box like that. So he came kind of taking him very lightly, ended up getting dropped, getting stunned, getting thrown around the ring, and, uh, you know, was very, very lucky to scrape out a, a decision win, to be honest. I think Anthony Joshua, on the other hand, will present um, a totally different problem uh, for Francis Ngannou. Mark my words, people, Anthony Joshua will not take Francis Ngannou lightly. I'll tell you why. First of all, he has the benefit of hindsight. Um, he's seen what he can do against Tyson Fury, and he's going to be wary. He's going to be wary of that hard right hand. He's going to be wary of the way Ngannou sets up his power shots. And I think he's going to nullify him with footwork because Francis Ngannou's footwork didn't look great in there. His stamina was okay. I think... Uh, but I think Joshua is just in that place now where, you know, he's had two fights against Usyk, a guy who moves a lot, who's got a lot of skills. He's had fights uh, that have been very physical, uh, fights that have been very tactical, you know, and I think he'll work on, you know, setting him up with some footwork, with some feints, and set him up with some fast shots, which Ngannou's not going to um, have enough experience to, to deal with. And uh, it's not going to be like getting hit with Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua carries much more power than Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury has speed, fast shots, but as we can see, they weren't doing much damage to Francis Ngannou in there. But they were hitting him. Tyson Fury was connecting on Francis Ngannou, but he just didn't have that much power. That's going to be a different story with Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua has too much skills. He's going to be moving around, and when he does land those shots, He's going to drop Francis Ngannou, I guarantee it. I feel that um, Francis Ngannou is riding high at the moment on the Tyson Fury win, but it's going to give him a false sense of security. Maybe he thinks that he can, well, he does think that he can uh, um, handle all the heavyweights because of Tyson Fury's performance. Um, and um, I think he's wrong. I think Tyson Fury mentally came in there with the wrong game plan and mindset, and that's the reason why Ngannou was able to do so well. I think Anthony Joshua is going to come in there very careful, very um, tactical, and I think he's going to land on Francis Ngannou. And Francis Ngannou, I don't think he's going to be able to stand up to that kind of power. Um, and I think the same thing if he was to rematch Tyson Fury. 
Tyson Fury would not let him hit him like that anymore. He would be moving around, he would be peppering him with the jab and uh, just moving out of range and doing all sorts of things in there. And Ngannou would not have such an easy time with, with Tyson Fury, now that Tyson Fury knows what he's dealing with. So, you know, personally, I think Anthony Joshua's going to have a standout uh, performance against Ngannou and he's going to look like the man at the top of the tree again. For Ngannou, I feel like it's going to be a bad a bad night at the office. Um, a good night financially, most definitely, but at the office with Anthony Joshua in form, um, firing on all cylinders. I just think he's going he's gonna to struggle with Anthony Joshua. I could be wrong. It could be another really close um, performance and Ngannou's stock goes up. But um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. I do have uh, Anthony Joshua winning at the moment. I just think it's that perfect timing. Everything is coming together for him. The training, you know, he's looking confident. He's got good wins behind him. And I, and I just don't see him coming unstuck against Francis Ngannou, unfortunately. I do like Ngannou, though. I think he's a legit heavyweight. I like the crossover uh, in the boxing. I think he should um, just keep going with his boxing thing now. You know, he's, he's ranked now, so, you know, he can, if he loses to Anthony Joshua, there's still a lot of fights that he can, uh, that he can make. And um, a few good wins against some top guys puts him right back up there in contention with, with the top guys again. So, you know, he's got nothing to... Uh, to feel bad about if he loses to both Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. There's still big fights out there. Parker, Deontay Wilder, a whole a whole uh, selection of fighters in the top 10, top 15 that would still um, put on a good show against Francis Ngannou. But anyway, let me know what you think about this fight being announced. Did you see this fight on the cards? Um, I, I thought it might happen, but not so quickly. Uh, Anthony Joshua against... Francis Ngannou. Can't wait to see the fight. Let me know who you think is going to win. Are you looking forward to the fight? Um, do you think it's making a mockery of the sport of boxing? That's another thing that um, may be a, a common perspective on this. I do tend to favour the traditional um, route in boxing, but I am um, I'm definitely being influenced. Definitely being influenced. I have enjoyed a few crossover celebrity fights. And I think it brings more attention to boxing, which is a good thing. So it gets everyone involved and it gets everyone talking about it. So let me know what you think I've waffled on too long. I'm on to the next one. I said, guess who's back? Man, guess who's back? I said, guess who's back?